family and welcome to those at home and afar. Tuesday at 7 o'clock there will be a Bible study in the hall and it will be James the fourth who will be studying. Wednesday at 2 p.m. this is in the hall and tea and coffee after the worship. It's good to see you here today, and it's nice to be back. Of I think the past two or three Sundays I've been in the other church, some of the other churches. So Marion's at the Shinty Pavilion with St Munda's congregate people this morning, and it's good to have a number joining from various locations as we join to our hearts together. Some words to prepare us for our act of worship today. We lift our voices, we rise and sing, we come to praise the Lord our King. We receive what Christ has done in love and understanding one. Let truth be known in word and deed to meet our deepest human need. So let us Worship God and sing to his praise. Our first hymn um, is 615, 615, and whether, um, whether we actually stand up or whether we remain seated, we sing the hymn, Stand Up and Bless the Lord. Stand up and bless the Lord, ye people of his choice. Stand up and bless the Lord, your God, brave heart and soul and voice. Above all praise, above all blessing high, who would not fear his holy name and Lord and magnify. Oh, for the living flame from his home to her brought O oh, touch our lips our minds inspire and wing to him our thought there with be Nine regard our hymns he deigns to hear, though unrevealed to mortal sense, our spirits feel him near. God is our strength and song, and his salvation ours. Then be his love in Christ proclaimed with all our ransom. Stand up and bless the Lord, the Lord your God adore.
Let us seek the Lord together in prayer. There is one God and Father of all who is in all and through all. Our merciful and our mighty God, we are here to praise you, to lift our hearts and sing Alleluia to our King. You are, gracious God, indeed worthy to be praised. You are good and holy. All that you do is right and true. And we come that we might rest in your love and receive from your bounty, from your goodness. Spirit of life and truth, come to us today. May your gracious presence come into our hearts and minds and influence our desires. Jesus, risen Saviour, come to us today. We tell of your love. We take your words to heart. O God, we are here, the people you have chosen, that we might serve you and serve others. God of life and love, in our deepest selves we have a longing for you, a space that only you can fill, a hunger that only you can satisfy. And we come to you, but as we come, Lord, and reflect upon ourselves, we see that we have tried to satisfy our needs and express our purposes in ways that are not quite right. At times we have sought fulfilment in pleasures or in possessions. We have prioritised our own comfort and well-being, leaving others at a distance. Lord, if our ways have grieved you or hurt others, we ask for forgiveness. We know we can live a better way and that you will help us. We learn from Scripture that there is forgiveness with you so that with reverence we can serve you. Lord, we thank you and we receive your forgiving love. We open our hearts to you that we might receive from your grace and truth. Show us, Lord, how to honour the way that you have set before us, so that in us and amongst us, faith and respect and love can grow. All this we ask in the Saviour's name. Amen. I'd like to tell you a story. The story is about a woman who took her little dog um, to the shops in the village that she, that she lived in. And when she'd been to the grocers and then to the butchers, because it was in those days when there were grocers and butchers, the butcher gave the dog a bone. And the, the dog happily carried the bone in, in her mouth and walked with, the, with her owner down um, to the river's edge where her owner sat on the bench and had a rest and the, and the dog started happily to, to suck at the, or to gnaw at the bone right down at the river's edge. All of a sudden, um, something caught the attention of the dog, little doggy, and the dog looked into the, into the water and the water must have been still at that point, and the doggy saw a reflection of, its, of herself. She's, the dog saw it, reflected in the water, another, what looked to her like another dog with a bone in its mouth. And the dog thought, I'd like that bone too. 
So it pounced at this reflection in the water, trying to get the second bone. Only at that point, the one bone in its mouth fell out and into the water and fell right down into a very deep bit. So then, the doggy didn't have a bone. By trying to, by not being content with the bone that it, it had had, it had lost the, lost its, its treat, hadn't it? And perhaps there's a message there that if we are not content with what we have, if we're always looking for something more, then true happiness will always escape us. The Bible says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Jesus said a man's true life does not consist in the many things he possesses. The Bible says also, the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil. That verse is sometimes misquoted. It doesn't say money is the root of evil, but the love of money is a root of all sorts of problems. And later, in a few moments, we'll hear a passage from Hebrews that says, be content with what you have, because the Lord provides for our needs. And rather than always be seeking more and more things or possessions, true contentment is being glad, rejoicing in what we have and trusting God for, for, the, for the future. Now we're going to hear our two Bible passages that Ella's going to read to us today from Matthew and from Hebrews. as those you were suffering as they are. 
Marriage is to be honoured by all, and husbands and wives must be faithful to each other. God will judge those who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never leave you, I will never abandon you. Let us be bold and then and say, The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Let's sing again. 133, Father, I place into your hands. Father, I place into your hands the things that I can do. Father, I place into your hands the times that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go, for I know that I will trust you. Father, I place into your hands my friends and family. Father, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Father, I place into your hands the person I would be, for I know I always can trust you. Father, we love to see your face, we love to hear your voice. Father, we love to sing your praise and in your name rejoice. Father, we love to walk with you and in your presence rest, for we know we always can trust you. Father, I want to be with you and do the things you do. Let us pray. Our gracious God, in your word, we are challenged to live a better way. We ask that you'd help us speak to our hearts. Help us to understand your will and purposes better and to grow in love and service as your people, as disciples and followers of Jesus, and in his name we pray. Amen. A few years back there was a series of surveys done, I think on the tele, um, aimed both at adults and children, and a question was posed, would you rather be able to fly or would you rather be invisible? Well, that's a, what a question 
to ask, would you rather fly or would you rather be invisible? Many of you will recall Peter Pan, the boy who could fly, who remained young and ha had adventures with Wendy and the other boys on an island called Neverland. Perhaps we think of Mary Poppins and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Would not being able to, would being able, surely being able to fly would give us enormous benefits. Just think how you could avoid all the troubles about, about bus and train travel. Just think what you could do to go and help people in need at short notice. Surely it would be a better choice than to be invisible. However, when the results of the surveys were taken in, the majority of adults said that they would rather be able to be invisible than to be able to fly. They chose the self-serving option. They would rather be on the defensive, be hidden, be not seen. That's, perhaps that says something about us. Perhaps you recall Nelson Mandela, who for years and years was imprisoned for his beliefs and his political activism. He later, on his release, was to become the president of South Africa. At his inauguration, he spoke publicly. And some of the people that were there had been those the ones that had um, presided over the courts that had imprisoned him. And he said, our greatest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. Living by faith challenges us to be active, to be forward-looking in the world in the ch and in the church, to live from the deep that's within us, to live in a way that perhaps the world hasn't learned. Perhaps we need to learn something of the truth about ourselves that we do have the capacity to make a difference where we are in the world, in our communities, to influence our families, our churches, our communities for good. But of course we can only do this when we're drawing strength from God, receiving from the riches of his grace, spending time with the Lord day by day in prayer. That passage from Hebrews speaks about identifying with people who are imprisoned. Many of the people who were imprisoned at the time that the letter was written had been imprisoned because of their faith. When I was a teenager, my mother took a great interest in the work of supporting believers behind the Iron Curtain, persecuted believers. We had prayer meetings in our home, and a group of Christians prayed and wrote letters. That was a wave of persecution. You may, re you may remember or know that there was a wave of persecution that began really in the 1950s when the, in the communist era in places like Romania, elsewhere in Eastern Europe and in the Soviet Union. The local group that met in our house were linked to Keston College, which is now called Keston Institute. I remember being in the south of England once and going to meet the Reverend Canon Michael Bordeaux, who was the churchman who was highly involved with them. Today, there are still people who are in bonds because of their convictions, because of their Christianity. I know many of you take an interest in Open Doors, the Christian charity that works and supports them persecuted for their faith. Remember those in prison as if you were imprisoned with them. I don't know if you ever recall watching a few months back a program called The Apprentice. But there was one episode where a team were asked to create a a paying event where people could experience prison life for one day. 
when the paying customers got there, they discovered, however, that part of the deal was that they were shouted at and humiliated and herded around and sort of treated roughly. Of course, prisoners aren't always treated harshly or humiliated like that, but in some places they have been. So we are encouraged to identify with those who are imprisoned as if we were there with them. Perhaps we should say to ourselves, when we think about the many reasons why people are in prison, um, therefore the grace of God go I. It's, um, we shouldn't be indifferent to the plight of the imprisoned or the refugee, the homeless or the poorest. Perhaps some of you will remember Lech Walesa, Walesa um, who was um, much in the news um, a few years ago. He was a Polish trade union leader imprisoned for his activities, leader of a ship workers, um, non-communist trade union who organized campaigns and strikes for workers' rights. Well, he was supported by the Catholic Church and received by the Vatican and became president of Poland in 1990, later on. He sp spoke of his Christian faith and how he relied on God's strength. He was a man who lived his faith, lived out his faith in difficult times. Wherever we are, life may be tough, the world may be harsh, and circumstances difficult, but we're called to be people of faith in these settings. And each era, I suppose, each age has its own challenges for, the, for Christians. The writer to Hebrews says, speaks about, has already spoken about the great exemplars of faith from the Old Testament who introduced, introducing some of them. The reference to hospitality and receiving or entertaining angels unawares connects us to Abraham, doesn't it, who received at his tent the three visitors who were the angels of God. Abraham, think about Abraham, he stepped out in faith. He was willing to go and sojourn in a foreign land, an unfamiliar territory, living in tents, giving up a comfortable life because he obeyed the call of God. Enduring hardship, we're told that he looked for a city that had foundations whose builder and maker is God. Today, the people need, the world needs people of faith, of commitment, of character, of Christian character. And we're not to get discouraged. We can get discouraged when we think the church is going through very challenging times. And there are times when we come up with challenges in our own personal circumstances as well. When our normal coping mechanisms don't seem to get us through. Having a faith in God and in Jesus Christ is so helpful. We know to trust God to be our strength, whatever our challenges, whether even if they're caused by our own mistakes, we can trust God to be our help in a difficult world, a challenging world. And of course, our worries may not just be about ourselves. We may be carrying a burden of care or worry for others. And maybe we just don't know the answers. We can say simply, the Lord is my helper. And he said that he will not let us down.
There's a challenge, isn't there? Not just to live for ourselves. Not just to please ourselves. Not just to seek contentment in the, in, in the sort of pleasures that are about me. We're told that Christ did not please himself. And the answer isn't in self-absorption or in just getting more, more and more things, looking for something else that will make us happy. If you try and live that way, you're always looking for something else. There's also something else that you're out for. True happiness comes when we open ourselves to God and to the Spirit, to Jesus and to the Spirit, when we commit to living well, when we commit to virtuous living. Following Jesus asks us to step out of self-love, self-absorption, into love for others, to love one another with the values of caring, compassion, sharing. You might think that the opposite, opposite of Christian love is hatred, but it's not. The opposite of Christian love is self-love, self-absorption. We're called out of that into a selfless, self-denying sort of love. And to do that, it takes a crucified self, learning to allow Christ to do his work in us, that through his indwelling power, he can do a transforming work in our hearts and lives. We can learn and be able to obey his will and live out of the best and the more unselfish motives. The passage speaks, let brotherly love continue, or let brotherly and sisterly love continue. And that refers specifically to Christian love and the Christian family. The classic commentator Matthew Henry said that love, Christian love, brotherly love, is the badge, as it were, of the Christian. It's true that our love, our Christian love, should be for everyone. It should ex extend beyond the church, but there's to be a special love that is in the church family, that is reflected in the life of the believers together. The church is to be a place where we know we're loved. And for many of us that is so. We know that when we come to church we're welcomed, we're recognized, we're accepted, that we're loved. A place where we're never made use of and never hurt by others. The last couple of weeks I've been saying to people, isn't it good in the church that, that we encourage one another and, and show our appreciation a little bit more and sometimes even just to say it, it's so good to see you today. Just simple things that we add to our conversation that makes a reality of what it says, like brotherly, and sisterly love continue. And we all have a part to play in making it happen. Let brotherly and sisterly love continue. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the challenge of your word. And there's much in these passages to take us onward, how we need your help, and the help of, that we can give one another, that we may truly live out our faith in hope and in victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to 
sing 5, 8, 3, safe in the shadow of the Lord. Safe in the shadow of the Lord beneath his hand and power. I trust in him, I trust in him, my fortress and my tower. My hope is set on God alone, who sits and spreads his name. I trust in him, I trust in him to keep me in his care. From fears and phantoms of the night, from foes about my way, I trust in Him, I trust in Him, by darkness as by day. His holy angels keep my feet secure from every storm. I trust in Him, I trust in Him, and I'm afraid go on. Strong in the everlasting name, and in my Father's care. I trust in Him, I trust in Him, who hears and answers prayer. Safe in the shadow of the Lord, possessed by love divine. And meet his love. Let us pray together. Our God, gracious Father, Lord of all, glory be to you for this wonderful world. We thank you for every living thing, for flower and tree, for the creatures of the earth, for the skies and the seas, and for all human life, all endowed by you. We give thanks for the life that you give, it is a gift, for work and its rewards, for days and hours of rest and love, for worthy tasks done. Lord, we give thanks for new things learnt, for challenges that pass, for times of success and satisfaction. It's all part of life. Lord, we give thanks for friendships forged and held for our common joys. Lord, we give thanks 
for character formed out of toil and tears. Lord, we give thanks. God of today and tomorrow, give us courage and strength that we may continue to build a common good, to work together, to strive for truth, to seek peace. We pause, Lord, to think of those who journey with us along life's way. May they know deep within that they're part of our lives, of our thinking, of our caring. We pray for those who are experiencing ill health, that they may know your healing touch. We pray for those who are struggling with worry, with struggling to cope with circumstances, with a past that is always catching up, with memories that bring sorrows. We pray for them, that they may know your peace. Lord, have mercy upon us. We pray for one another, that we may know your guidance and your love. We pray for those who take decisions in public life, that they may do so with wisdom and with integrity and see how to look after the needs of all. We give thanks for those who once worshipped you here below and now share a greater worship in your nearer presence. Come to us, Lord, with your renewing and healing power. Give us hope for today and strength for the morrow. And we sum up our prayer in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So our hymn now four hundred and eighty, four hundred and eighty, new every morning is the love our waking and uprising prove. New every morning is the love our waking and uprising crew. Through sleep and darkness safely brought restored to life and heart and thought. New mercies each returning day around your people as
Rejoice in love that we can share. Rejoice in beauty everywhere. Rejoice in truth that makes us free. Rejoice in good things yet to be. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you and with all whom you love, both now and forevermore. Amen. May, sir. May God's blessing surround you.